Hi, I'm Rick of Rick's Taxidermy Native Works, here with Advanced Tanning Solutions, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use this system with a Colombian red tail boa. So we're going to take it from the beginning to the end to this beautiful, soft, supple tan. For those of you who like the dry preserve and the glycerin method, I promise you you're going to like this and you're never going to go back to using it again. I won't and I never have. Never will. It'll never cross my desk ever again. Let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to start off with some uh, pick fleshing, spot fleshing. Uh, we've already skinned it and fleshed half of it uh, to save some time. I'm going to use the little um, scraper tool that comes in the kit and a knife with a rounded edge. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So what you want to do is you want to start off at the head and you always want to go with the grain of the scales. So always go head to tail. Don't ever try to come back up because the way that the scales are designed, this is the way it propels itself forward. So I will move the, lay, the um, scale forward, grab and pull itself back. So you're just going to be fighting it and cutting holes the whole time. So what you want to do is just take your sharp blade, or decently sharp, and come in at about a 45 degree angle and slice a little like you would on a fleshing beam or when you're doing any type of heavy duty fleshing, you want to cut the flesh away, like so. And in dry areas, don't really worry about it too much. The snake that we're working on today is a Colombian red-tailed boa. He's uh, roughly about six years old and about nine feet. Nine, ten feet, you know, give or take. Just try to get up underneath that meat. If it dries out a little bit, it's all right. It'll probably help you. Snake meat is very different in consistency. When it dries out, it actually gets kind of rubbery or starts to dry out. And that's just going to help you get it off. And once you get started, you'll notice that it starts to pick up in, in speed once you kind of get started. When you start getting comfortable with your blade and start getting comfortable with your strokes and your movements. And you'll notice that the flesh just kind of comes off a little easier the more you keep moving. You can always grab it and peel it and pull it off. It's not attached all that well, so, well, decent enough to where you need a knife, but. So get along the um, belly scales and also run up here along the sides. Always try to keep pulling it back and keep the tension on it. Tension's what helps you cut. Treat it like you're gonna eat it. So if you're gonna tan a product or a hide, make sure it's not stinky. Make sure that it's not gross or dirty because ultimately dirty will just uh, dull your blade and you don't want that. You don't want to have to sit there and keep sharpening your knife. It can be quite an annoyance. With larger snakes you'll notice that their flesh is a little thicker 
and it can be stubborn at points. So don't be afraid to get a little bit more elbow grease in there, put a little more pressure, and really get it kind of working and working for you. If you're having a struggle gaining ground while you're fleshing, try to pull the hide a little bit more taut. Keep it a little more pressure and you should be able to work it out. Trust me, the hide's a little more durable than you think it is. You might touch it and it feels kind of thin, but it's quite strong. So if you have to, you can manhandle it just a little bit. Just like with every snake, and mostly every animal, there's gonna be a gland down here. You wanna make sure you get that gland out. It's an anal gland or scent gland, musk gland. See, just like that, you're almost done. Now we're just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of the pick fleshing or spot fleshing in some areas like right here. And it looks a little too thick, but a little too thin for the knife. And with this, you just wanna work on the edges and figure out which one works pretty good. I like using this little point. It really gets in there and kinda does the work for me. especially when you're trying to get in between and to the, the bottom of the scoops of each scale. You're just trying to do a general, the bigger piece would be, work better. And you can cover a little bit bigger of an area, kind of that rounded edge. Put some pressure on it and really torque it and wrench it off of there. Just like that, we're almost done. And we'll go ahead and get this ready for the salt bath. Now that we're done fleshing, what we're gonna do is mix up our salt bath. All we're gonna do is just use hot water, which we already have in the bucket, and mix up our salt, dissolve the salt. And then we're gonna let the water cool and when it's completely cool, we'll introduce the hide into the salt bath. All right, now that the water has cooled, we're gonna go ahead and introduce the hide into, or the skin, if depending on how you say it, uh, into your salt bath. So by doing so, we're just going to accordion it nice and easy. Just kind of let it sink to the bottom and accordion. What I call the accordion fold. You want to make sure that it flows freely and unrestricted. And the reason why I do the accordion is it goes in and it folds, so that way there's no air pockets to be lifting it up. It sinks all the way to the bottom. We're using roughly about three gallons of water in the bucket. That's enough to allow it to move freely 
and you can even come in, stir it, and mix it around every once in a while, just to kind of keep it moving and not letting it sit so stagnant. So we'll be having it in here for about uh, four to six hours, and you can stir, you know, once every hour, once every couple hours. That's we're gonna go a little bit more time, closer probably to the, the six hour mark because it's a little thicker. And we're gonna let this sit and we'll be right back. All right, so we've had it sitting here, soaking in the uh, salt bath for about three hours or so. Now we're gonna pull it out and rinse it, rinse it and make sure we get all the salt off of it. This is more of a static rinse. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and pull this out and try to make sure that we keep scales going down and just drain just a little bit and we're gonna kind of accordion feed it flip it around into the actual clean water so trying to keep all the water moving down the scales What you're doing is when you're trying to wash it against your hand, you're kind of pushing and squeezing out that salt water and allowing the fresh water to come in. That's the purpose of doing it the way I'm doing it. You can do this under moving water, like I said, as well. You just kind of want to make sure that it's getting rinsed and cleaned properly. Now we're ready to go ahead and drain it and go ahead and tan it. You know, draining, you can put it on a rack or throw it over a bar. However you want to drain it, it it's up to you. All right, so we've had it sitting and draining. We've got our uh, tan here ready to go. And the tan mix is based on the length of the snake. There'll be a chart provided for you to know, but the tan, it's a snake tan, so a wide variety of snakes, rattlesnakes, pythons, boas, all the constrictors, uh, part of your colubrids like rat snakes and bull snakes. It's wide variety, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it is, it's a snake tan that's designed for snakes. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the bucket like we did when we did the salt. We're gonna do that accordion fold to go ahead and get it tanning. I'm gonna put it in upside down so that way 
I know that the tan is touching it and getting to it. Because on a snake, the uh, scales are like shields, little armor. So most of the tan comes in through the skin, the inner side of the hide, where there is no shield. That's why we prepped that surface. Remember, we're doing the accordion fold to also keep air bubbles and air pockets from stopping the tan getting to where it needs to go. Remember, these larger snakes, you're going to want them to soak a little longer. I think we gave you the uh, 14 to 16 hours. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it out and set it here for uh, draining and drip drying. We're going to blot it dry, and then we'll go ahead and lay it out and get it going for oiling. Now, I always want to have it go with the scales. It drains a little easier. And just like coming out of the pickle. I'm gonna squeeze it just a little bit, not much, just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna let that sit for a little while and go ahead and blot it dry. And then the next step will be uh, oiling and we'll continue on throughout the process. See you in a minute. <clears throat> and we're back. Uh, we've already got him drained and stretched out here. We're gonna do a quick oiling on the scales. I'm going to do the quick oiling on the scales because I'm going to de-scale this. The only reason why I'm going to do that, I knew this snake personally when it was alive and I know that the snake is in shed. How you can usually tell with any snake is any of the black or darker areas seem kind of bluish and milky. Uh, this is your project, you don't have to do this. But I'm gonna do it because like I said, I, I personally knew this snake. This snake was a impressive nine foot Colombian red tail boa. And he had some complications, so that's how I know he's in shed. And uh, he passed away before he could shed. So all I'm gonna do is put a quick bit of uh, oil on here just to lift those scales off and peel it off. Again, you don't have to do this part, even if your snake is in shed. I recommend that you do because you'll get a more vibrant and beautiful luster, more beautiful color if your snake is in shed. If it's not, you don't have to do it on a snake that's in between shed. Like I said, we're just going to do a quick oiling just to get the oil on top of the layer of scales I'm trying to remove. When it comes to oiling snakes, always go with the grain.
you will notice that the oil does give it more luster and you can see your pattern a little better I know it looks like I'm using a lot, but for the size of snake that he is, it's not a whole, whole lot. And all you're doing is using a hand like a squeegee and just running it down the scales. We're not being too critical or too picky right now. I'm just trying to get the oil on so that way it can penetrate the scale layer that I'm trying to remove. That'll give me a separation between the skin and the scales. Uh, snakes do shed in a solid skin most of the time. And that's usually due to some type of moisture or a layer between the scales that the snake produces itself. I'm just using my whole hand, just kind of moving and squeegeeing down all that oil. We're going to go ahead and let that sit a little bit so that way I can start penetrating those layers that I need it to penetrate. And then I'll go ahead and start the descaling process and trying to get off the old dead skin. See you in just a few. And we're back. It's been a little while for the oil to go through and penetrate. I've already kind of gotten started here trying to peel the skin and scales away from the head to give myself a good starting point, something that I can actually grab and start peeling on. Like I said, because the snake was in shed before he passed away, I'm, I'm going to try to go ahead and get that shed off before we can continue with the next oiling for the actual oiling. So I was sitting here using this little pick and my little knife, picking at it and trying to get it to peel up. And I got it to peel here. So let's see if we can get it to keep peeling. It might just come off in chunks for a little bit. You can use a little scraper to try to scrape on it and try to peel it up to where you can try to get a hold of the skin and the scales here. I 
it's not necessarily all coming off the way I'm wanting it to, but I'm going to have to sit here and just kind of keep picking at it and try to keep working it down. Now, mind you, I'm doing it this at this process instead of waiting for the scales to be dry because it's tanned it's still moist and there should be enough moisture between um, the scales that and it's able to be a little bit more resilient it's the tan has plumped it up and thickened the hide so I'm not so worried about ripping it or tearing it or trying to scrape or cut a hole Now when scraping, you're not putting on a lot of pressure, but you're putting on enough pressure to try to lift and get that scale or that skin up and over your blade or your little scraper tool. I'm only using a blade on this because he is large. It's going to help me increase my surface area. If you have a smaller one, this will work. You can use it for this on the bigger snakes too. This might take you a little bit longer. If you can't get it all to come off in one piece, then you can't get it to come off in one piece. That's what I was trying to do. Now regular descaling you usually do at the end. When it's all tanned up and dried. But you can do it both ways. You can do it this way here, or you can do it at the end. Whatever your preference would be. For this snake, because he was in shed, it's just easier for us to do it now rather than later. Later, that layer might dry and stick to the scales, and then you try to do it then, you might be peeling off all the color. And we don't want to do that. Well, now that I'm done, um, I've noticed, while I was working on it, I've taken off the first two layers. He has another layer of scales that need to come off. This layer is a thinner layer, so it can be taken off at the end. Uh, the oil really did help uh, bring in some more life and luster, and taking off those scales, everything's not so milky and opaque as it was. So we're just gonna have one more. I didn't realize he had three stuck sheds. So like I said, this uh, stuck shed that's still on here, we'll uh, go ahead and get that off at the tail end after it's been dried and stretched and whatnot. And then we're going to go from here, what we just did, and we're going to do another light oiling to also well, the proper oiling to get the oil in the skin this way and lift this last layer. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the oiling on the skin side. So give me just a minute and I'll be right back with you. All right, now that I've got him situated and descaled, like I said, we had uh, another layer of scales that we still need to take off at the end. We're gonna go ahead and do the second oiling. Now, normally you'd only oil once, but we needed some help from the oil to be able to strip off those uh, bad shed that didn't come off. That's your choice if you wanna put the gloves on. And all we're doing is just a quick oil. One 
wanted to mention a good part of the, this system is you don't have to pin it, you don't have to stretch it out like you would um, running glycerin or any other artificial uh, preservative. Because this actually is a tan, it's not just a preservative, it actually tans the hide. I love using this snake tan. When I came across it, I was still using dry tanning methods or dry preserving methods, and I was still using glycerin. And I've fallen in love with this system. Glycerin once will never, ever once again touch my desk. Another good thing about having, well, descaling or de-shedding the snake is it creates less that the oil has to go through so it's easier for the oil to penetrate all the way through to the medium the center line from the bottom and the top there's a center line which is why we're oiling both sides you can feel where you need more oil the scales will kind of grab your fingers a little bit instead of your fingers just being able to slide down. And another reason why you want them to go down with the scale is you're getting it in every little nook and cranny between the scales, getting it all the way worked in. If you're trying to go backwards, you're going to come into problems with trying to lift the scales backwards. You don't want to do that. You always want to keep going down the same direction. And going with the scales, you can stretch it. All right, I've just got this flipped over. We're gonna go ahead and oil the underside so that way we can reach that center line. Only be kind of particular with your oiling in the head area. Don't be afraid to just kind of slosh it down. If you miss an area, because once it starts to pool, you'll start to move it around and see it, because it will pool in areas. And if you need more, just add a little more. Now being on the underside, you can go the opposite direction, then going with the grain of the scale. You're just gonna kind of move it back and forth and just make sure you're getting all the areas. If you see where you need more, go ahead and add it. Take as long of a time or as less of a time as you want doing this. Remember, it's your project. Just as long as you get a nice, thin, even coating on the whole thing, that's all basically that you need. Now that that's done, we're just gonna let it sit and absorb and move around the little puddles here and there and then just let it sit and hang out and dry. Just to reiterate, remember there is no pinning. You're not gonna have to sit here and tack it down or pin it. I laid it out as straight as I could, or if not straight, and that's the way it's gonna dry. So if you're got a little snake in it or a little bend, 
when it dries, it's going to have that bend in it. You can get it out with a lot of stretching, but eventually it will twist back in until the, the uh, fibers get used to being stretched and pulled. So you're going to have to work that out of there. You can get it out, but you're going to have to work it out. So it's always best to do your best to keep it straight. Keep the center lines all lined up. So when you're done oiling, like I said, we're just going to let it dry. We're going to leave it here for about a half a day on the plastic. And then we're going to take it off and lay it out on the actual cardboard to finish drying. Looking roughly complete about 24 hours. See you in about 24 hours. And we're back from letting it dry. And we're going to go ahead and flip it over while it's still kind of supple and do some quick thinning. It's not quite 100% dry, but it's not quite wet either. So we're going to go ahead and scooch this down here. <clears throat> it's kind of important with these thicker snakes to thin down and shave again just to make sure that we've got everything. Remember, like I said, they, they're a little thicker, so being thicker, that's not really going to help us for um, drying purposes. It's going to come out kind of dry and crispy. You, you want it to be soft and kind of supple. So we're going to go ahead and do that with a blade, and we'll just scrape with the grain, and you'll start to see everything start to lift up. You'll know you're doing a pretty good job because you'll start to see all these little pieces lift up. That's what you want. You want to get them, those pieces lifted up. And all we're doing right now is just getting that all lifted up so that way we can actually get in and shave it. We're just trying to break open all the laid down membrane and any oil that's still stuck on it. See how it's kind of starting to turn white? So you know you're breaking open and opening up those membranes. Like these big areas here, you can actually get in and shave these off. Lift them and cut them. Just breaking open the membranes is all we're doing. So give me a little bit, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. Oh, hey. <clears throat> well, I've been sitting here working on this thing for a little while now. And as you can see, I've got it nice and lifted up. I figured out with this, uh, thicker membrane, especially along this rib area. If I go back and forth, you can see where it's blue and then it starts to turn white. It starts to lift it a little better. I'm not having to push down near as hard, just scraping in the one direction. Uh, this way it's actually lifting from both ends, from both sides. This Tana Snake uh, system is just amazing. It makes this thing super strong, super hardy, really sturdy, and uh, that actually surprised me. 
Um, I wouldn't recommend going against the grain with any other snakes. This is a boa, he is really thick, so boas, pythons, I'd recommend it. But anything smaller, I, I wouldn't recommend it. They're a little too thin, and those are colubrids. This is, these are, this is a boa, the other ones are pythons. Different breeds, different species, different attributes. Uh, and same thing for the rattlesnakes, a little too thin to be going back and forth. Wouldn't recommend it. But with this guy, we're gonna go ahead and recommend it. So now we're gonna step on over to the next stage and just get a coarse wire wheel and we're going to go ahead and strip off some of this membrane to kind of thin it and get the hide more down to bare hide. So go ahead and get started on that. Now when you're doing this, watch out for your fingers. This is a stiff wire wheel, it will eat your fingers. Be gentle, be careful around in the head and don't do that. Go slow so it doesn't try to grab and grip. Remember, you're not in a race here. As you start getting further and further into the thicker membrane, you can go ahead and start getting a little bit more speed if you're confident that you're not gonna wrap it. You will notice it is gonna be a little messy. <clears throat> okay, now that we've got that all taken care of, I uh, just wanted to show you what I'm using. You can use a the coarse wire bit, or we got this one here. This one's better for getting along the edges, and this one's better for more in the center. Um, it is finicky on which side of the snake you're on. So going that way, you're better being on this side of the head and clicking it over and going the other way, you're better off on the other side, is what I figured out. <clears throat> and you can just go ahead and see all the snow, the little fluffs from all that membrane and everything, that flesh side, get it nice and broken up. Since it is a bigger snake, I do recommend doing this on any of the uh, boas and pythons, anacondas, stuff like that. And when you're done, you should see that nice and white, and it should be kind of velvety. That's how you know she got it pretty good. And now from this step, or this part of it, then we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and do some trimming. And once again, I, I wouldn't recommend going this extreme <clears throat> with any of the smaller snakes. Um, I think the smallest snake you'd probably wanna do it to would be a ball python if you're doing anything of that nature. So any of the pythons, boas, any of the crazy stuff. Anything that's non-domestic, I guess, what they consider exotic. So we'll go ahead and flip this over. Just 
just gonna clean it up a little bit. If you give me a second, I'll go ahead and clean up my mess and we'll hop right into the trimming. Oh, and for those of you who noticed, yes, I did decide to put on the glasses. I had, did have a few pieces fly up and hit me in the face. So glasses were recommended, even though I wasn't wearing them earlier, I learned my lesson. So I'll see you guys here in just a few minutes. So now we're going to go ahead and start doing our trimming here. Uh, most of the time you would cut these jaws off, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to just come in along the belly scale where the belly scale and the side scales meet. We're going to go right underneath the side scales just to get rid of this weird edge that we've got going on here. Dress it up, make it look a little more pretty. So we're going to Start off by <clears throat> the first scale here. Snip into that and then just follow that line. This line of scales is coming off. Now, trimming is optional. I think it does make it look a lot better, especially with these boas because the boas have this weird coloration once they're drying and their scales tend to curl and they just look weird. So I just trim them off. Save me from the hassle and the headache. And to make this a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and Kind of roll them up so that way I can have it right in front of me. And so, what I'm going to do is what they call a figure eight roll. So, I'm going to work on one side and I'm going to start rolling it as I'm pulling it towards myself. One of the easiest ways to keep control over it instead of having it hanging and draping off the table. Now you don't have to <clears throat> trash your ends here. <clears throat> you can actually use them in other projects for trim and other things. Give something the more unique appearance. At least that's what I do with them. When I'm doing any type of leather working or stuff, I'll put the scales as border. But if you have no use for it, it's okay. Go ahead and trash them. Just saying, you don't have to. My only advice is to try to stay as straight as possible and keep cutting roughly the same amount of scales off every single time. If you're not paying attention, you get too far. Uh, the scales, because of the pattern, will start to play tricks on you, so you might start teetering off and zigzagging. That's why I'm keeping it close to my face, so that, that way I can watch it. <clears throat> and I'm leaving roughly about the same amount of scales every time. Just helps make it look more professional, more clean.
Now remember, the snake does taper, so they get real skinny from the head and they taper out and they taper back in. So just keep that in mind as you're going, so that way you're not cutting off the same amount. It's more based on the scales where the scales meet, not the same amount of scale that you're cutting off. Because otherwise, if you're doing that, you're gonna come in and you're gonna start cutting out into your pattern. And you don't wanna do that. Where it gets tricky is working around the vent. See where it just snipped off? You do have to do a snip in. And then you gotta try to twist the skin to where you can do a trip out, a snip out. And any uh, garden shears or poultry shears, kitchen shears, they'll work. Anything that's heavy duty and sharp. Go ahead and round off that tail. And see what this does is now you can turn it around and you already have a roll to start going the other direction. Or if you're picky, you can roll it back out and go from the head to the tail. And I'm gonna go ahead and just unroll it and go from head to tail, just to make sure that I keep it symmetrical. And then start the same on the other side. Take off the, sa the same first scale line, and that's gonna set you up in your line here. It also helps the straighter your snake is. So if you laid it out straight and it stayed nice and straight, it'll work to your benefit. If there's a bow or a twist in it, it might throw off your cutting. Now because I have this wing here, I'm gonna have to take one extra layer of scales just to start. Just so that way I don't have such a big gash out of it. And then slowly taper that back in. Usually go about an inch or so. Maybe two inches is all it takes to get right back on, on track. And don't worry if you do get off track a little bit, you can get back on track. But whatever you do to this side, you're going to have to do to the other side. <clears throat> so try to keep it even, as even as you can. And you'll notice that this process actually goes pretty quick. Especially after you've done a couple snakes, then you just automatically know where you're cutting. And that tends to help. <clears throat> and just like always, take your time. There's no rush. Be patient. And then come down back to the tail and finish doing that round and see how we still have a little point here just kind of snip a little bits off until you get it nice and round because trust me their tails are quite round show you guys kind of what we got going on here now if you want to bring some life and luster back into it what you can do is hit it with a clear coat all right and that's it I hope this video was informative and entertaining for you I wanted to just go over and have a little recap here I wanted to show you guys once again, that beautiful white, how everything came out, it really is true leather. It's soft and supple, and you can see there's no crackle, no wrinkle. That's the beauty of this Tana Snake system. It did a wonderful job. 
when I first used it on some other snakes, I was a little skeptical, but I'm, I'm a firm believer now. For those of you who like the dry uh, preserve method and the glycerin method, you're really gonna like this. It actually turns it into leather, and the cool thing is there's no pinning, there's no extra trimming or excess trimming. This is a true tanned snake, true tanned system. Thanks again for joining me, and if you could do me a favor, please tan that like button and hit that subscribe, hit those notifications so you can see the other videos that we got coming out for you. I appreciate your support and have yourselves a wonderful day. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs>